Good afternoon and welcome to uh, AP Calculus Office Hours. Um, my name is Curtis Brown and I work with Texas Instruments and I'm here with uh, Steve Kokoska and Tom Dick. Steve is a former uh, calculus reader, chief reader, and uh, Tom Dick was a, a calculus committee chair um, and super excited uh, to have you guys uh, here with us this afternoon. Um, I know this is a is a tough and a, and a challenging time, especially um, as we prepare for uh, AP exams and and getting the content uh, ready to go. Both students and teachers, this is this is tough. Um, but we're happy to be here to be able to support you guys, and this is one of the ways that we've uh, kind of dreamed up uh, for doing that. Steve and Tom have been very uh, gracious in volunteering their expertise. So. Um, I'm just here to host, so I'm going to pass this over to, to Steve and let him go ahead and get started with some of your questions. Um, before I do that, though, I want to um, just remind you, you can post your questions on the YouTube uh, chat. Um, let us know where you're watching from and um, let us know what kinds of questions you've got, and we will stop uh, these guys from their kind of prepared material. We've gotten some questions earlier on, and so they're going to answer those, but then uh, if you've got things in the chat you'd like to ask, we'd love to hear them and, and you guys would love to be able to answer them. So Steve, um, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Curtis. I'm delighted to be here. Very happy to be working with you and Tom once again. Um, can you see that screen? Sure can. All right, fantastic. Give me one second here to set up the tablet. I know that Allison's gonna turn off my video in a second and there we go, I think we're looking good. So uh, what we're going to try today is these are a couple of questions that I ran across on the AP Calculus uh, teachers Facebook page, and I thought these were really good ones. I've modified a couple of them, uh, but the first two I think are excellent, and they deal with differential equations and slope fields. And in fact, if you've been following along AP Calculus for a while, you know that there is frequently, uh, often, a free response question that involves a differential equation, and often one that involves slope fields. So let's take a look at this one. This is modified slightly from uh, what was on the Facebook page, but let's take a look at this one. Let's suppose we consider this differential equation, dy dx is equal to one plus y divided by x, x cannot be equal to zero. And on the axis provided, let's see if we can sketch the slope field for the DE at the eight points indicated. Very typical sort of part of a free response question. So in order to do this, I took a look at the eight points here, the eight points, whoops, I'm sorry about that. I took a look at the eight points in that graph and I evaluated uh, dy dx, whoops, let's see if I can get that to work. I evaluated, whoops, sorry about that, dy dx at those eight points. So for example, I took a look at dy dx at the point x equal minus two and y equals zero, and that turns out to be minus one half. This is pretty routine, not, monoton not monotonous, but pretty routine. And now what I need to do is to take this information and sketch some line segments in there, segments of the tangent line to the curve, to a solution curve with those slopes. So, okay, rather than take up your time and try to do that by hand, I did that down here. And a reasonable question is something like, well, uh, what do the readers or what do the, uh, the AP calculus readers look for in scoring a problem like this? Well, let's just take a look over here at this point, one zero and two zero and one one. The slope right here at one one, let's see if I can find it. Where is it? At one zero, excuse me, where can I find it? There it is, it's one. So I've done my best to draw in a line segment with slope one. At the point two zero, where is that? The slope is one half. So what I'm looking for is that the slope of this line is at least less than the slope of this line. I'm looking at them relatively. And over here, the slope at one one is supposed to be two. So the slope of this line segment ought to be greater than the slope of that line segment. That's the type of thing we're looking for. So that's a really good standard problem that would get a couple of points, I think, on a free response question. Of course, we don't know what the questions are gonna look like this year, but that, that's a really good one, I think. That's and here's story. one that's uh, sort of attached to that. <clears throat> Curtis, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I was just um, commenting that that was a good place to start. I like that, that question. Um, while I've got you interrupted, I see we've got a bunch of people from all over the country 
California seems to be winning, though. I think they have the most. Okay, very cool. All right, so here's <laughs> another one. Solve, solve this differential equation. Solve a, uh, find a particular solution to this DE with the initial condition f of minus 1 is equal to minus 4. I really like this problem. There's an awful lot of little things going on in here. I'm eventually going to turn this over to Tom so that he can do a little technology with this. But there's some really nice things going on in here. I want to remind you that if your students are asked to solve a differential equation, the only method that they're supposed to know is separation of variables. Now, look, many of you are superb teachers. Most of you are superb teachers, and you may have taught your students some other techniques. And they may be able to solve a differential equation using another technique. Ooh. Now, that's okay. Uh, they can earn points for any valid mathematical technique, but every DE that's given to the students to solve will be solvable by separation of variables. And in fact, may even be, that may even be the easiest way to do it. So let's take a look at this one. Hey, Steve, before you get yes, started, sir. this one, can I bring you back up to example one? Sure. So I had a, a, quest, a question um, come in. If the slope was undefined um, at a particular point, do you want a vertical line or an open circle? Um, how do you want the kids to um, know? I, I don't want an open circle, and I, I, I would bet that you won't see a problem like that on the free response. Um, if the slope is undefined, I really don't know exactly what's going on with the solution curve. Right. I'd have to get more point, points in there. I, I, I can't answer that question. I have to take a look uh, or gather more information. Sure. So I'm not going to ask that question. I don't think you're going to see that on a free response. Uh, I need more information to answer that. Okay. 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 All Thanks. right, back down here. So the first thing I'm going to do to solve this differential equation is, I don't know why it keeps going to the eraser there, but I'm, I'm going to separate the variables. I'm going to get all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other. Uh, there aren't any constants in here times a variable. Uh, I often get the question, well, where do you couple that constant? Do you put it with the x's or the y's? And the truth is that it doesn't matter. Uh, you simply put it in the easiest place possible. Now, this is a real interesting one, I think. This is a very interesting question because now I need to find an antiderivative of both sides. And it turns out that in this case, uh, both sides involve a natural logarithm. So I have the log of the absolute value of i and the log of the absolute value of x plus 2. Now, a question I frequently get here is, is the absolute value symbol necessary? Well, yes, it is most of the time. And it really is necessary in this case. Right. So I'm going to make sure that I add my plus C. Could I put a plus C on both sides and then combine them in another step? Sure. But I've done all of that in one step. And now what I'm going to do is use the initial condition and try to solve for C. So where would that initial condition go? Here it is. It's up here. So that says X is equal to minus 1 and Y is equal to minus 4. So I plug those values in. I do that correctly. So I have the log of 1, which is 0. I have now the log sure. of 4 because I took the absolute value. There's my value of C. So, all right, I took that value of C and I plugged it in back down here. And now what I want to do is solve for Y in terms of X. Now, this is interesting here. I've used uh, minus Y in here. And the reason that I did that was because of this initial condition. So when we solve a differential equation and we look for a particular solution, we're looking for a quote unquote branch, the largest branch of this particular solution. And the branch that I have here is where y is negative, and I have to take the opposite of that in order to evaluate that absolute value. And that'll come into play here, too, I think, as we take a look at this in final solution. Now, this expression was positive, And by the way, I think it will work out that we can look at either one of these arguments of the absolute value, but this expression was positive. There's the log of four again. I think I used a property of logarithms here. 
And now let's see if I exponentiate, did I use that word correctly? Both sides, I'm here and solve for Y, multiply both sides by a negative, and there's my solution. Now there's one thing missing here. The one thing that's missing in this solution that is not always called for on the AP exam, but sometimes is the domain. Sure. So Curtis, just to make sure everybody's listening and paying attention, let's see. Can Allison see if we can get any answers to that? I bet we can. Uh, I bet we can come up with some folks that can uh, come up with the domain for that. Well, let's see if we can get the domain for that, and then I'll toss it over to Tom, who'll we'll take a look at a couple of slope fields and and particular solutions. So in the, the chat domain? box, um, drop in there um, on the YouTube chat or or on the comments, either one. Um, what you think the domain is for this, and we'll. We'll start uh, watching for those here. I mean, it's just interesting. I mean, this is certainly the equation. If we were to graph that, right. that's the equation of a straight line. And one might think that the particular solution is that entire straight line, but mm. it can't be. No. So what do you think here? What's the domain? Mm. I'm looking for, any answers? I haven't gotten any yet. Uh, here we go. No answers? Greater than uh, negative two. I think that's correct. I've got I one. think the domain here is that X is greater than minus two. X certainly can't be equal to minus two. Right, right. And we want that part of the domain. We want the interval on X so that this expression right here that expression inside will be positive, sure. and therefore we hope that y will be negative. That's pretty yep. cool. That's a great problem. There's lots of little things going on there. Right. So hey, I'm going to shift it quickly, Steve. The the less than uh, negative two wouldn't work because we're trying to take that natural log there. So that would create a a negative. Well, if we take x, if we take log. x to less than minus two, and I think Tom may be able to show you this visually. Sure. If we take x okay. less than minus two, then the value of y is going to turn out to be positive. Mm -hmm. And that would lead us to the wrong branch up here. Right. Right. Okay. Tom? So lots of, lots of little things here. This is really tricky. Yeah, Very this is tricky. a really interesting one. It's a good problem, yeah. All right, Tom, you ready? I think so, let's give it a shot. So okay. I'll, all right, try to share my there screen. You go. Okay. And I think I've got a TI Inspire document open that we could uh, try to take a look at this example uh, more visually using a differential equations plotter. Can everybody see my screen? I can see it. Okay, all right, let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to go to um, menu here and let's see, let's uh, go ahead and uh, let's see what, oh, what I wanna do is uh, insert a graphs page and we're going to uh, do graph entry edit and actually select the differential equations plotter. Um, and what that's going to provide for us is a way to generate slope fields like the one that was in that very first example that uh, Steve did by hand. Um, on the AP exam, you're often asked if, if you do have a differential equation problem, it, there's often a part where you're asked to sketch a, a slope field. Uh, the differential equations plotter here is actually going to generate that for us. Um, now, much like the y equals menu on uh, lots of calculators, we've got a y1 here. Notice that little prime symbol. Uh, so this is ready to accept our differential equation. And if I remember, it was y over the quantity x plus 2. Well, we're referring to y as y1 here. So what I'm going to enter is y1 divided by the quantity so I'll put it in parentheses, x plus two. Hey Tom, while you're typing this in, and I know you can address this, um, maybe talk and type at the same time, but okay. is, 
way to generate slope fields on the 84 plus? I think you probably got an answer to that here in just a second. Right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll get to that in just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to let you know there was that question. Here's a slope field for that differential equation. Uh, and if you'll remember, um, Steve pointed out that uh, the differential equation, uh, that expression is not defined for x equal negative two. And if I look over here at x equal negative two, uh, you, may, you may be looking at these vertical line segments. I think there was one of the questions on the YouTube channel uh, somebody asked, well, should you put in vertical line segments if you've got a place where it's undefined? Uh, I'm thinking these particular line segments are not lined up exactly at x equal negative 2, but they're close to x equal negative 2. So they're yeah, close. To I agree. In fact, you notice when we get close to y equals 0, they're not as vertical. That They have a steep slope. Okay. Now, um, so this gives us a visual a look at behavior of solutions. I want to go back now um, and let's take a look at that differential equation again. Uh, but notice underneath there's a spot where we could put in an initial condition. And I believe the initial condition was, let's see, was it? Um, minus one, minus negative four. Negative one, negative four. Minus one, minus four. Okay, so let's put in that initial condition. So minus one when x is negative one. Y is, y is negative four. And what this is going to do when I enter that is it's going to plot that point and then it's going to use actually a numerical method to approximate a curve that would fit the slope field. Okay. Oh, that's very cool, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't know if, uh, I'm not sure you mentioned it, Steve, but uh, your final solution turned out to actually be a linear function. Oh, right. yeah. It was, I and think, even right, got the right negative branch. four times the quantity x plus two. Seems like you've even yep. got the right branch, as so Steve mentioned. It stops, yep. it comes to a screeching halt at x equal negative two. That's so really cool. Part of the line that's yep. right of negative two. So That's your domain awesome. is really coming into play there. Um, so uh, one thing I use slope fields for is, uh, as Steve mentioned, I mean, when these appear on a free response part of an AP exam and students are asked to solve it, it's almost always, I, I, I can't remember a time when it's not on the non-calculator part where you're asked to solve it use, by hand using se separation of variables. Um, but when I'm practicing, when I'm teaching, uh, I like to use slope fields as a chance to check visually whether stuff is making sense, uh, sure. mm -hmm. as well as just to generate slope fields to, to practice on. Uh, with this differential equation plotter, I can actually grab that initial condition point and move it. Now, this is kind of interesting. Some of these spots where I move it to, I'm actually getting a line that's crossing that x equal negative two. So that makes me wonder if the numerical algorithm that's being used to generate that is actually stepping over the, mm -hmm. the undefined place. So we've got to be careful there. And that's a good lesson to know is this numerical approximation method, what it's basically doing is something like um, for your BC calculus students at the Euler's method, uh, something like that. And so it could be stepping, it may be on that very first example I just happened to hit uh, right on the um, place uh, x equal negative two where it was undefined. That's why it truncated the line. And notice here, it's giving me, uh, wow, it looks like all of the solutions turn out to be linear. I think we could probably see that by revisiting Steve's symbolic work. Is yeah, that, sure. that kind of, he would actually end up with that that constant C is going to change the slope of the line. Uh, mm -hmm. the constant that arose when you did the anti-differentiation of those sides. Um, yeah. 
but uh, these slope fields are, are really, I think, a great visual tool. There is not a built-in slope field feature on the uh, TI-84, uh, but you know, there are programs that are available uh, that you can put on there where you can have this slope field capability added to your calculator. Tom, am I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you shared that as part of the TI in Focus uh, AP Calculus series um, that we've got. That's on. right, yeah, if people uh, uh, will go ahead and, it's a free resource, I'll go ahead and put in a quick plug for it. Uh, first referring to the TI in Focus AP Calculus website, that's uh, Texas Instruments uh, has made available. Uh, this is a spot where Steve and I have produced a number of videos uh, corresponding to each of the three response questions over the last three years. Uh, I'll just scroll down here. You can see that uh, there's 2019 AB1 BC1. We go to the resource library for that. Um, let's see videos. Steve does videos on uh, how this question was scored, common errors that students made. He goes over some nice technology solutions and extensions. And he also addresses some mathematical topic that is, uh, that was associated with that problem. Um, I have do a couple of videos, one for the TI Inspire and one for the TI D4 uh, that looks at some part of the question or some mathematics associated with those questions. So. Those are all free video resources and just wanted to point to those. Some of the resources also include uh, not only the slides uh, from the videos, but also there might be programs or documents uh, for your TI-84 or your TI Inspire. So for the person who asked me, um, it's uh, their name on, on the uh, YouTube channel is Strabo. I guess I'm saying that right. Um, that asked about 84 uh, slope fields, you've actually provided, and you don't have to go there now, but there, one of the questions um, was on uh, differential equations and you've actually got that. Yeah, there is a slope field uh, program for the 84 that you can download right off of this site. Yeah. And, and sure. uh, there's a video there that showed you how you would use it. Yeah, and I've got one more, um, I've got one more question um, directed. Either of you guys can kind of tackle this. I think I think I know the answer, but I'm going to let you guys uh, explain it. Um, and that is, do we know whether students will be able to use calculators on the test this year? Um, and I think that's uh, I think that's been kind of since it's going to be open book, open note kind of explanatory, we're assuming calculators, but I'll let you guys kind of speak. Uh, you know, that's what I've heard. Um, we're going to know a lot more on the April 3rd. I think that's a date for sure. people to really perk up their yep. ears. But uh, my understanding is open book, open note, open calculator for the, and it's all free response. So yeah. no choice. I mean, we'd, we're not pretending here to be experts on how they're going to do it because April 3rd is when the, the college board's going to address all of that. But uh, the assumption right. is, uh, yeah, we don't have any special um, inside information that we're keeping from anybody. We just for sure. ourselves. Um, for sure. Um, I also got one question about the um, installing the um, the calculator, the free software that we have posted online right now. Uh, Inspire and, and 84 software is both uh, on there. And um, we'll try to address that through the chat. But um, at the very end, I'll also uh, make a quick uh, demonstration as to where you can download that and, and how it works. So Thomas, I'll, I'll take care of you at the end of the, at the, end of the conversation. Okay. Um, okay. Steve, could I pass this back to you? Absolutely. Okay. So Steve, go ahead and share your screen. There you go. All right, ready. Can you see it? Yep, we can see it. Okay. So I've got a couple more problems here uh, that were uh, posed on Facebook, and I really like these two also. So this example three here has to do with parts as parts. So non-math question, Curtis. Uh, do you remember what commercial that came from? Parts, parts as, as parts. parts? Yeah. For 25 bonus You would put points? me on the spot with that. Uh, no, no, I, I don't. No, Tom. no. What's that? wasn't it Frank Purdue? <laughs> yeah, parts as parts, I think so. Anyway, here we go. Sorry, I don't a little aside. <laughs> little aside. 
I really like this one. Uh, there's some nice concepts, conceptual ideas going on here, some important calculus concepts, and this one involves a graph. Tom, if you're thinking ahead here, um, one thing that students often do is when they see a graph like this that consists of straight line segments and maybe a quarter circle or half a circle, uh, some students will try to actually define this graph, define this function analytically as a piecewise function. So I didn't try that here, but that might be something that you could try at the end here to sort of check your work. We're going to do this analytically. So here we go. Here's a graph of y equal f of x. It consists of three line segments. And I don't know why the problem did this, but it did anyway. G prime of x is equal to e to the x, and there's g prime. I could have just written e to the x in there, but that's the way this problem was given on Facebook. So I, I wrote it that way. So we want to see if we can find this integral from 0 to minus 2 of f of x, g prime of x, dx. So here's the first thing I did. And I've got a couple of my own biases and my own style of doing this. So the first, the first thing I did, I don't like that these bounds are in this direction. I want to put the smaller bound, uh, the smaller bound down below. So what I did is I used the property of integrals right away. And I switched the bounds and I put a negative sign out there. I don't know why. That just makes it easier for me. And I wrote in here, g prime of x is equal to e to the x. Now, how do you solve this? I thought about this a little bit, and I, I figured, well, you know what? This seems like I might be able to get somewhere if I tried integration by parts. Now, if we do that, there are only two functions here. There's f of x and e to the x. And, and which is which? Which is u and, and what's dv? Well, if I were to let dv be f of x, then I'd have to find an antiderivative of that. And that didn't seem like a very good idea. I guess then I'd have to go back and I'd have to find an, an analytic expression for f. And I might be able to do that. But the other way seemed a little bit easier to me. So I let u be equal to f of x and dv e to the x dx. I can take uh, and find du here, take the derivative of both sides on the left with respect to u over here with respect to x. That's f prime of x dx. I'm a little worried about that. And I can find an antiderivative here for v. That's just e to the x. That's pretty easy. So here we go. Let's see what happens. So there's my minus sign out in front. Let's see. This is u v minus the integral, integral of v du. Did I get all the parts in there? And I didn't write the bounds on the integral sign, but I have everything enclosed in brackets, and there are my bounds out there, okay? And that's pretty good. Now, let's see what happened here. I just brought that product down, but then I simplified all of this as just e to the x. Let's see, how did I do that? I think what I did is I went back up here, and I took a look at f on the interval, from minus 2 to 0. And on that interval, the derivative of f is constant. It's just plain 1. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that means I'm just taking the integral of e to the x times 1. Well, that's easy. That's just the integral of e to the x, and that's e to the x. Well, I'm feeling really good about this problem now because I took care of the integral sign, but I'm still a little worried because I've got this expression, a sort of general expression in here for f of x. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try to plug in the bounds now. So if I plug in the upper bound, I've got f of 0. How did I get that? f of 0. Well, I went back to this graph, and I read off the graph. f of 0 is equal to 3. And I've got e to the 0 here minus e to the 0. There's the first expression from plugging in the upper bound. I subtract off what I get when I plug in the lower bound. So let's see. I've got to take a look at f of minus 2. I apologize for uh, scrolling up and down here. f of minus 2 is right there. That's 1. That's good. Got that. e to the minus 2 and then minus another e to the minus 2. Well, this is pretty cool. Let's see here. I'm going to take care of this first. This expression just cancels out, doesn't it? That just becomes 0. So I don't have to worry about that at all. 
And this is going to be 3 times 1 minus 1, so that's a 2 inside here. I've got the negative sign out in front, so that expression is just minus 2, and that's a great problem. It looks awfully complicated from the beginning. Uh, it's, it's a graphical, it's got a graphical part. It, uh, I have to use integration by parts, and it reduces to a really nice number. That's a great problem. Okay. Questions on that one? Anybody so, study? Steve, I, I haven't seen any comments in the comment box there, but um, I found that particularly genius, the way you did that, uh, creative. <laughs> honestly, I would have I tried to come up with an expression for F. Um, just looking at the graph, I, you know, for the part that I was interested in or worried about, um, yep. you know, that, that in interval between, uh, negative two, uh, and zero, I would have, I would have probably tried to come up with an expression that makes sense for that. Um, and then, yep. then worked with it from there. Um, since it is linear, that made it relatively easy to come up with, um, with that, but, uh, Boy, that that's a good question. Isn't that neat? I do have that's a nice one question. comment here that that is uh, would that be a question for the BC test? Um, would you expect that in BC? Uh, let's see. For parts, could be. Yeah, could be. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. A good. Yeah, it seems like an interesting question overall. Um, yeah. I mean, there's certainly other ways to find, uh, to maybe get this answer, and that's something that you might try. I don't know if Tom's working on trying to find a, a piecewise defined definition of this function and then plugging that into the uh, Inspire to see what would happen. But that would be interesting. It would also be interesting to do this on the TI-84 by trying to find a piecewise defined uh, function for S and see what it would do with something like this, because we can plug in an expression uh, for e to the x. So it would be interesting to see if that comes back with with minus two. Tom, that sounds like All an right. assignment while Steve's talking. It, it just, did, you it? just got it an did. assignment. <laughs> oh, and you know what else you could do? You know what else you could do? I'm sorry, Tom, thinking out loud. If you got an expression, if you got an analytic expression for F, I suppose what you could do is actually graph this expression. You could actually graph F of X E to the minus X. You could graph that on, of course, a graph screen. And you might be able to find uh, an, an estimate of the area or the integral on a graph screen. That would be cool too. So this three, there's another couple of ways you could try that. I like that. We'll get that as an assignment for next time. Okay. <laughs> All right, I've got one more. Uh, no AP calculus exam would be complete without a question about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if I had to bet. That's fundamental. I would guess, <laughs> I would guess that one of the questions that students see here in a month or so. One of the questions is going to involve the fundamental theorem of calculus in some way. So here's kind of an elegant that. way to use it. Here's kind of a neat way to use it, I thought, anyway. It says that if f is a continuous function so that this equation is true, this expression is true for all x, find an explicit formula for f of x. And at first glance, it kind of looks like, gee, there's, there's no way that I can do that. I mean, how am I going to find an explicit expression for x, for f, excuse me. So I had to think about this one for a little bit. I actually, having done the previous problem, I actually thought about trying something with integration by parts on this, having done the previous one, but I didn't get anywhere with that. And then I stared at this long enough, and I said, oh, you know what? This is a great candidate for the fundamental theorem of calculus because I can take the derivative of both sides. If I take the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to x using the fundamental theorem of calculus, that's just f of x. The lower bound is a constant. The upper bound is x, not a complicated function of x. So the derivative of that left-hand side is just f of x. Well, that sounds good. Now to take the derivative of the right-hand side, well, I have to take the derivative term by term, and this term is actually a product, okay? I can take the derivative of that by the product rule. Let's see, the derivative of the first is one times the second 
let's see, plus the first, x times the derivative of the second. We'll have to use the chain rule there. So it's e to the 2x times the derivative of what's up there in the exponent. So that's just 2. Got that. Now I take the derivative of this term using the fundamental theorem of calculus once again. And even though the integrand is a little bit more complicated, it's still just that integrand evaluated at x. So that becomes e to the minus x times f of x. And now here's how I looked at this. Well, let's see, I have one equation in some sense in one unknown. My unknown is f of x. I'm going to try to solve for that. So let's see, I brought all the terms to the left-hand side that involved f of x, and I did a little bit of factoring. So I think I have f of x times 1 plus e to the minus x. I did a little bit of factoring here, too. I think I took out an e to the 2x out of both of those terms. And then to finish this off, I divided both sides by this expression, 1 plus e to the minus x, and son of a gun, there's an explicit expression for f of x. And that's a neat question also involving the fundamental theorem of calculus. How about that? That is cool. Wow. <laughs> that's a really nice How about one. That? Isn't that cool? Yep. Every time Very I do that, every time we do this, I learn more calculus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Any questions or should I turn it back over to Tom? You got anything else here on technology, Tom, or any questions come in, Curtis? Don't have to be related to these examples. I haven't seen any questions come in uh, for, for, this, for this time other than uh, asking about the software. So I'm, I'm prepared to do that. But Tom? Uh, sure, I could uh, actually go um, to the 84 and may do a piecewise defined function that uh, matches Steve's That'd be cool. example. Yeah, do you have that uh, ready to go? Uh, not ready, but I'm ready to put it in. Okay. All right, okay. here we'll we go. It. Coming coming over, Tom, there you are, sir. All right. Okay. Oh, you need to share your screen there, there we go. Okay, so I'm on a TI-84 now, and I'm in the Y equals menu. Uh, and I wanted to actually put in a, a piecewise defined function that would match up that graph that Steve was looking at in his uh, example just before this last one that he did. So I'm going to go to the math menu and you scroll down. There's actually a nice option here to put in a piecewise function. So I'm going to enter that. Uh, and it's, oh, it's already set at three pieces. And I believe Steve's function had three pieces to it. Correct. So we'll see. Okay, and it sets up a little template for me to put in my three piecewise functions. So the homework that I did or the, uh, while Steve was on video, I did uh, look at his graph carefully and figure out what the uh, expression was for each piece. Uh, and if I didn't make a mistake, I believe his, um, the first piece would have a formula of negative X minus three. And this was the part that was good for negative five, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to negative three. So I'm gonna put right. that in for the, I think of it as the domain for that piece, okay? Mm -hmm. um, sure. And let's see, for my uh, inequality symbols, I wanna go to, let's see, test, I think. Yeah, yeah a second test. Yeah, there we go. And Tom, you can go all the way over. You can do those inequality symbols that way. But if you go all the way over on the next one, I'll show you a, another trick here. OK, sounds good. All right, let me do this one. And then I will uh, uh, listen to the, there's probably a very nice shortcut that I'm not using here. OK, <laughs> the next piece is, I, I think it had the equation x plus 3. This is a piece that I had agree a, with that. one. That's the part I did. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You mentioned that the actually the integral, the piece of the the integral, the interval we were interested in was really in that piece. It falls in this in this section. So you're going to do negative three, right? Now press uh, second and math again, second test. Okay. And all the way on the right hand side, you'll see conditions. Yep. 
And that gives you the ability to do this with the logic involved there. So now you have um, less than or equal to and X is less than or equal to. So you can use that option number uh, uh, number five, eight, I, think I guess. Is the one I want. Do what? Pick the one that you need. Option or eight want. is the one I want. Let's see. Okay. Ah, okay. Ah, it's continuous, so it wouldn't have mattered whether you used either one, but. Yeah, and then I want to put in, um, it's okay, so it's waiting for me to put in the next uh, plate. Or right, the, next piece. the other end of that domain. Yep. There we go. Okay, great. And now you've got that. So that uh, shortcuts it a little bit. And then let's see, oh, we got one more piece to do, and I believe that piece is going to have formula negative x uh, plus seven. And again, if you were looking at the graph, you could... Uh, see where I'm coming up with these. And I want to do this shortcut again. Uh, so you said conditions. Mm -hmm. And this time it'll be that same one, I believe. Yeah, you still want number eight. And let's see, I need to actually put in. Uh, let's see, insert two here. And then I think we ended up at uh, five. Good. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And let me just, uh, I'll just go ahead and use Zoom decimal windows, the one I tend to go for. Uh, that's not the absolute best window here because we're missing a little bit of the graph up there, but it looks, uh, looks visually a lot like uh, what Steve had. Uh, I'm going to change my uh, Y min to, um, let's see, how about uh, negative uh, 2.1, and I'll change my Y max to 6.1, and I think, ah, that's a better picture. Okay, so now we've got a picture that's very much like the one that Steve had. And Steve, Very cool. the integral you were looking at was actually this function times e to the x. Is that right? Correct. That's yeah. what that was the right. integral. So for y two, we could actually put in uh, y one times, and then we can put in uh, e to the x. Right. Okay. So we've got a piece. Uh, I would have to change my window quite a bit. Uh, but the function we were integrating, uh, let's see, what was it? It was from zero to negative two. Is that right? Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So if we eyeball this, we can see if we're integrating from zero to negative two, we're integrating from right to left. So this area under the curve that looks positive because it's above the curve, but because we're integrating from right to left, we'll need to take the negative of it. Okay. Correct, good. Uh, and then we could actually do a, an integral. Um, just go ahead and go to a calculator screen. Wow, there's a lot of stuff there. I think I'm gonna clear <laughs> off. <laughs> and let's go ahead and put in an integral. Uh, let's see, uh, it's down there at, nine and let's see it was from zero up to right two. and the function is just our y2 so right that's what's nice about entering these things uh as functions you then you can just refer to them by their name and we'll integrate with respect to x and cross our fingers Let's see, you ended up with negative two, Steve? I did. Ah. How do you like that? How do you like okay. that? Okay, very nice, okay. Isn't that something? And you know what's amazing to me too, Tom, is if you, if, if you go back kind of quickly to that graph screen, just the for graph? a second. Sure. If you go back to that graph, you know, that red graph, that's a graph of a, a transcendental function. It's got an e to the x in there. Right. And yet what we've just, what we've just found is 
the exact area underneath that curve. We've got the exact area underneath that curve is two, which is just amazing. And that when you say two, you're actually looking at it from left to right. Right. I'm looking at it from left yeah, to right. Yeah, the area under that would be two. And so if we integrated from zero to negative two, we would get the opposite of that area. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is there any chance, uh, Tom, I've forgotten, can you do this on the 84? Can you actually uh, find that definite integral on the 84 on the screen just for the heck of it, see what it does? I know, I know that's a numerical thing, but uh, can you do it on here? Yeah. Uh, well, let's take a look. Let's see. Try it and see, Tom, underneath the calc, yeah. So we want to do an integral, number seven, at yep. least. Uh, lower limit. Oh, we're right at it. <laughs> We're at zero. Okay. So I'll enter that. And then I'm actually going to go from right to left. Oh, you know what? I'm on the wrong. Oh, so let me sure, do that. Yeah. Again. You know, I think what I'm going to do is just uh, clear and try that again. So let me okay. do uh, calc. Number eight is the integral. Seven. Seven rather. And now I'm going to use the up arrow to switch over to the red function. There you and go. I'm going to do uh, lower limit. Let's get to right at zero. And then let's go to the upper limit. It's actually negative two. We are going from right to left. Oop, negative two. I think I overshot it. There's negative two. I'll enter that. Yeah. Actually shades it in that? and gives us the value down there at the bottom. So how about, how about that? that? And notice that because yeah. I went from right to left, it did treat that correctly as an integral value. Yeah. Yeah, even though the area is above the x-axis that's under the curve, because we went from right to left, we need to negate that. So. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Very, Very nice. nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. good. So uh, we good. Any questions, then, Curtis? No, uh, we just posted a ten-minute warning, so if there were questions, um, folks need to get them in um, right now. But really quickly, we also posted the the URL um, in the uh, in the chat box just a, a moment ago for our distance learning. I know we had an earlier question about installing software. So really quickly, I'm going to uh, I'm going to hit the the share button on my screen. So Tom, when you're ready, um, would you um, go ahead and let me? Sure. So if you'll hit the stop share piece. Okay. All right. So you can see my screen now. Yes. So that URL that we um, that we just uh, put in the in the chat box will take you here to this uh, COVID nineteen uh, support section uh, of our website, um, and here is where you can get a PC Mac software and um, some more information about uh, getting a Chrome solution as well. So there's a link here for that um, to to fill out a form there about that, but. Um, if you're interested in getting, um, say, the, the calculator um, emulators that, that Tom was using here um, right now on either your PC or Macintosh, you can certainly do that. I'll click on uh, the software for students, but the teachers works the same, the same way. You select the software, SmartView um, or Inspire um, or um, even our, even our, uh, our Math print for calculators, uh, smart B for math, uh, math print calculators. You input your email address, and then we'll get you a, um, we'll get you a, a, a license code for a six month uh, subscription for the software. So um, that's kind of the the way that 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 works there. So just a, a heads up, I can show you kind of how it. Well, I'll let you guys do it on your own. But you input your email. It's it's not for commercial use. It's just to confirm. Um, that you're not a robot or something, uh, and then you can get that software. So, uh, just a quick a quick share there. Um, so, Tom or Steve, any other uh, comments or or thoughts? 
Well, I, I think, uh, Curtis, if people do appreciate this, we, we would appreciate it if they'd uh, send in their, their questions ahead of time. Uh, I understand that, you know, people are uneasy sometimes about asking while we're broadcasting live, but sure. please feel free to send your questions to, and uh, we'll take a look at them. We'll try to solve them here online. We're uh, purposes only to help you and your students prepare for the exam. For sure. I did get one question, Tom, um, okay. that you can address or, or I, it doesn't matter. I can too. Uh, the question was, um, I can't find the piecewise function on my Y equals menu. Um, Tom, can you just really briefly share your screen again and, and sure. show how you got that uh, piecewise? Uh, yes, so I'll go to the Y equals menu and I'll, I'll go down to Y3, but the uh, uh, if we go to math, then it's going to be on that math menu and it's quite a ways down. So it's, it's, all, it's not on the screen when you first bring it up. So if you keep scrolling, there we go. So it's option B there. Now, if the person who's asking has a, um, it's possible if they're using a, maybe an older model calculator they might not have that piecewise option there. Right. Uh, but when you do enter that piecewise, uh, it gives you a chance to reduce the number of pieces or let's see how um, four or five. Okay, it looks like you, you can get up to five pieces. One to five pieces. I think it defaults to three. So you can, uh, and then once you've got that, you can arrow down, say, okay. And then it gives you a nice template there to fill in both the expressions for each piece and the interval for which that piece will be valid. Um, don't know if that answers the question. One, one thing I'm I suspicious of is whether you, uh, the person actually has that option available to them so, if they have an older model. Yeah, so if they do have, so it's Gav, Gavin is asking us here. Um, and Gavin, I, um, you can use the software. So what Tom just, uh, what Tom is showing right now, you could go back and, and download the software that I just showed just a second ago and have access. Oh, to the actual software. emulator software. Yeah. Um, and, and then you would have access to this um, as well. But Gavin mentions that instead of piecewise, um, it says log base. So I'm guessing um, that he's using an, an older, uh, probably using an older version of, of 84, maybe the TI-84 plus silver edition. Um, and I think that does stop um, at the, uh, at the, yeah. so, oh, it's so it's solder. I don't think that have, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. I don't think that uh, piecewise is, is in there. However, Tom, since we're on this topic and we have a, a couple of minutes, do you feel, um, would you be willing to, to share how Gavin might be able to input a, a piecewise function? Now I'm really putting you on the spot here. Without access to a piecewise? Without access to the template? Uh, sure, there, there is another technique one could use. Um, and um, for example, if um, I'll just try to do something like these first couple of pieces up here on Y1. Yeah, you can just show one piece maybe. Okay. Um, um, so I'm gonna put, um, say like X plus two. And uh, I'm going to- Multiply. Multiply that by actually an inequality. Uh, and so my inequality is going to be um, x less than, and so I'll go to my test menu. You level. probably want it to be greater than, right? This will be, this, I think this will work. <laughs> oh, sure. And, yeah. Okay. Um, three. Yeah. To oh, okay. Sure. All right. Get that first. Um, and what this is going to do is the x less than three, this may look like a really strange expression because I have an inequality as part of the expression. But if you plot an inequality, it plots as what's called a truth function. And so it, it evaluates to be one when this expression is true. It evaluates to be zero when this expression is false. So this will end up being equal to x plus two times one, 
whenever x is less than three, it'll evaluate to be x plus two times zero whenever x is greater than or equal to three. So if we actually graph this function, notice that it's equal to x plus two when x is less than three and it's equal to zero when x is greater than or equal to three. So it's, that's, uh, this was the old school way before we had the nice piecewise option that people would, would do these things. And you can add several of these together uh, to get, for example, something that looks like this. Sure. Uh, Curtis, maybe you had another technique in mind. Well, no, that's that's exactly what I was thinking about. Um, and depending on what your intentions are, um, you can you know you can kind of get fancier and fancier. Uh, dividing by uh, the yeah, a, dividing it would by with, x plus uh, x less than three would eliminate this piece over right, here. Right, would eliminate that. But you couldn't add any other pieces to it. So you know it, it kind of becomes a a conversation of you know what can I what can I, what do I want to be able to do with my function once I've seen the graph? Right. Uh, do I want to see all the pieces and parts or do I want to do it piecemeal? Uh, right. Yeah, what some people will do if for piecewise is they'll actually graph using this technique uh, and doing a division instead of a times. What they'll do is they'll do those as separate functions. Right. Plot all of those at the same time and then they're seeing all the pieces. Uh, right. There would be different colors for each piece because the uh, TI-84 mm -hmm. would graph it. Yeah, yeah. But that's a that's a way to kind of handle that. Robert did uh, mention that we could also, up, you know, the, um, it's a good idea to update the the software. But um, I think for for um, for Gavin, I think the the best thing might be to just go ahead and download the the free version of the software right now, um, so that you'll have that and and use it. So. Um, doesn't look like we have any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and just wrap us up, kind of a, a reminder um, to to keep watching for us. We'll um, we'll post another time uh, that we'll do this again uh, at some point. Uh, watch for us on social media. Thank you very much uh, for your questions. Continue to send them, in and we'll um, do our best to address them either via um, the comments uh, section on our YouTube. Uh, viewership or um, if we can uh, figure out another time to do another one of these, we'll, we'll address them at that time as well. So uh, thank you again, uh, and Tom, for sharing your expertise and, and, and um, giving up your, your afternoons uh, to, to help us with this. So I, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you everyone for, for joining us. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll chat next time. Thank you.